adults. It's just, it's not true at all. Adults are way faster at learning instruments than uh, kids, but sometimes kids can be better uh, piano students than adults are. And uh, if you're an adult and you understand the difference between the kid and adult students, then uh, you, you can learn way faster. You'll be a way better student. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the differences. So the first thing is that uh, kids, when a teacher tells a kid, hey, great job, as they're learning a song, uh, they usually believe it because adults know everything in their world uh, and nothing all at the same time. But uh, adult students generally are like evaluating themselves. So you're playing your song, you know what it's supposed to sound like, and you're going, that kind of sucked. And if your teacher says, hey, great job, you're not like, oh, I must have done a really great job. Uh, so adults evaluate themselves a lot better than kids' students, which means it's really hard to motivate adult students with kids. You can say, hey, great job, give them a sticker, and they think they did a great job and they're gonna go home and practice. Adults show up to the lesson, they screw up, and they know they screwed up. Another thing that often makes kids better students than adult students is that kids are content to play the same stupid little song over and over and over. So, you know, if you're just starting out on piano, a great song to start learning how to play is or something like. Right? And so you sit a kid down, you know, eight, seven, eight, nine year old, sit them down and have them play that song, and they'll practice that over and over, like trying to, trying to win this game, trying to conquer this thing. An adult, like, plays through the song, like they're struggling, making, having the same struggles that a, a kid has, you know, just trying to make your fingers do what you're telling them to do. But, uh, you know, the adults, like, getting frustrated because they, they don't even want to play the song in the first place. They just want to be done with, with this stupid stuff and do, start doing the stuff that sounds cool. So as it turns out, kids are a lot more patient in that way that they uh, don't mind playing the same stupid little thing over and over. Another thing kids have going for them that you're gonna, as an adult student, need to find a way to uh, work around is that they have the advantage of parents who tell them over and over and over and over to practice, right? And so uh, hopefully your teacher is, is kind of motivating for you to uh, practice and the threat of a lesson of uh, being accountable for what you've been working on, uh, that will hopefully help you to practice. But you know, kids got the like, you get home from school, you do your homework, you do your piano practice, we have dinner, you go to bed, right? Uh, so you're gonna have to try to like find a time, like carve out a time and then just do that consistently, you know? 20 minutes, 10 minutes after I get home from work or before I go to work or whatever it is, right after dinner and have that time carved out and as if your parent was there making you do it, just force yourself to sit down and spend that little tiny bit of time. Now this other thing that kids have going for them kind of goes across the board and that is kids are used to being absolute failures. I mean, they're not good at anything uh, until they practice it a whole lot. So in their life, they're constantly uh, failing at things and trying again and failing at those and trying again until they, they get this thing right. And as adults, we're generally avoiding the things we suck at and we kind of excel at the things that we're good at. And so we just kind of segment our lives off that way. And so in that way, when we pick up something new, whether it's piano or a new language, whatever, like we're used to mostly succeeding at stuff. Um, I mean, even if you feel like a failure, you're, you're avoiding the things that you really, really, really fail at, right? And uh, kids just don't have that. So they, they are more willing to screw up. And that's something that you just absolutely need as a piano student. If you're gonna be a good piano student, you need to be able to screw up and then go again, because that's all you're gonna do during your practice time. It's constantly screwing up. If you're not screwing up, it's time to start practicing something harder so that you are screwing up. So if you can't uh, come to terms with constant failure, wow. Yeah, then don't take up piano, I guess, or any other instrument for that matter, because you should always be practicing right on the edge of, uh, you know, here's all the stuff that I can do, and then here's all the stuff that I can't do, and always right on that edge, just constantly messing up until you don't mess up anymore, and then you take the next step. Another thing kids have going for them is that in general, their repertoire, their, the songs that they listen to are relatively simple. You know, uh, songs from the cartoons that they like or the movies that they like or the video games that they like or just the stuff that they're singing at school or wherever. Generally, those are a lot simpler songs. And so uh, adults come in with like this list of, you know, music superheroes that they want to like be able to play these songs. And kids kind of come in with their list of like, Here's what all my friends would think would be cool if I, if I could play these songs. And so generally, they're going to be able to accomplish their goals a lot sooner, even though, again, let me point this out, uh, kids, you know, if, if we went for the same song, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, sit a 30-year-old down, sit an 8-year-old down, that 30-year-old is going to just 
kick butt, right? They're going to be able to accomplish the same things way, way faster. So you're actually getting better as a pianist faster um, as an adult, but uh, it just depends on, of course, where you're setting that bar for, for good as to how long it's going to take you to get there. One last thing I want to point out that kids have going for them that adults, if you, if you can just prepare yourself for this, again, you're going to be an awesome student. Uh, you just got to know that going into it, kids also have this thing where uh, when they play a song, they're more easily impressed with themselves. Uh, you know, they, they play the song. Right? And they're like, hey, that sounds like a song. Like, I know that song. And in their head, they're like, you know, filling in the rest of the band. Uh, that, like, that's the song. And they, they show it off to their friends. And like, they, I look at this thing. I can make this thing happen. Uh, and generally, adults um, aren't going to be real happy with the song until it sounds exactly like the recording. So they're not filling in any of the stuff in their head. When they play that, it just sounds like individual notes. There's no band playing behind them. There's no impressive anything. So uh, in general, adults, again, have to go a lot farther before they're impressed with what they've come up with. But let's talk about uh, the role of the teacher and what a teacher can do. So there's a few things that a teacher can do. A teacher can provide inspiration. Um, a teacher can provide accountability. Uh, so that's, again, that whole thing of like, you know you got your lesson coming up and you got to practice. If you haven't practiced for the entire two weeks before your lesson, you're going to practice, you know, the last couple hours before your lesson because you want to impress your teacher. So they, they can inspire you to practice uh, to get better. They can hold you accountable for the stuff that you're doing. And uh, hopefully they can give you some guidance. And this is like, I think what most people go to teachers for, but it's actually a really small part of what teachers do. And that is, you know, you've got this body of information that you, you know what, all of this is and then there's like all of the rest of the magic of music that's out there that you don't know about yet and so hopefully they can the teacher can help you uh, get to that the rest of that stuff a little bit faster by using your practice time more effectively so guiding you in in your practice time but honestly your practice time is really what's gonna make you better the teacher uh, you know if you've got a, a like a really awesome musician just they, they can cook on it on any style uh, in any any genre anytime um, and if they don't like inspire you if they're not guiding you in your practice time and helping your your practice time be better uh, and if you don't feel that like I gotta get better because I, I gotta show off for them uh, then it doesn't really matter how good of a pianist they are uh, and it, uh, by the same token if you got a really crappy player but you really want to impress them um, and they can help like guide you in your practice time to use that time mo most efficiently they're going to be a better teacher than the other uh, the other player so I uh, keep that in mind when you're looking for a teacher you want someone that you're going to want to try to impress and that you know can guide you in your practice time and help you make your practice time more efficient this last point is the most important uh, failure meaning messing up playing the wrong notes is never a matter of lacking brains it's always lacking practice right so adults have this thing where uh they sit with their teacher, they know what they're supposed to practice, they go home, they try to practice it, but it, it's just not happening. And they understand, I'm supposed to play that and then those together. And I'm supposed to play that one and then those together. But like they, you know, mess up and they play that one and that one, no, I'm supposed to play, no, I'm messing up all these notes, right? That's totally normal. It just means that your brain hasn't sent those signals to those muscles enough time to make those ruts in your brain where it just, can do that thing back and forth all over and over and over. So again, failure, you're messing up your notes, is never a matter of lacking brains. It's always a matter of lacking practice. If you can remember that uh, and you can be okay with, with messing up your notes uh, over and over and over until you finally get the stuff right and you can carve out a, a time to practice each day, get in your 10, 15 minutes, you know, an hour or two hours would be great, but just that little bit of time each day and uh, you can keep in mind that you're getting better at a faster pace than any kid is going to get good um, and that it's not a lack of talent it's just a lack of practice time you put in the hours you're going to get there uh, you're going to be awesome so good luck have fun
right, everybody, today we're talking about what it means to be an adult piano student versus a kid and a piano student. Now, there's this major misconception that's really popular that uh, kids are better at learning new instruments than adults. It's just, it's not true at all. Adults are way faster at learning instruments than uh, kids, but sometimes kids can be better uh, piano students than adults are. And uh, if you're an adult and you understand the difference between the kid and adult students, then uh, you, you can learn way faster. You'll be a way better student. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the differences. So the first thing is that uh, kids, when a teacher tells a kid, hey, great job, as they're learning a song, uh, they usually believe it because adults know everything in their world uh, and nothing all at the same time. But uh, adult... Welcome back to LearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and as you can tell from the countdown clock, the lesson is about to get started. In case you're new with this, there's a few things I'd like to show you to help you throughout the lesson. These lessons are always guided and shaped by your questions. And if you're live with us today, there's a couple different ways you can do that. One is in the public live chat and the other is the ask Jamin a question button where you can ask me a question privately and I won't share your identity in case you're afraid that your question is stupid, but it's not. If you're in the archives though, then just open up the survey at the end of that. There's a place where you can ask your question. I will say I frequently get questions from students in the archives watching a lesson from six months ago and I have no idea what they're talking about. So please try to be as specific as possible. If you're watching this at LearnPianoLive.com, there should be a PDF and an MP3 button right next to this video. The PDF will often have additional video links inside so you can get more in-depth instruction on each of the topics. And if you're the kind of person who likes to print out the PDF so you can make the same notes on your physical version as I'm making during a lesson, now would be the time to do that. The MP3 is just a play-along track so you can practice more after the lesson. If these live lessons start feeling random or meandering, it's because they are on purpose. So if you're the kind of person who wants classical training with a step-by-step -step method, then you're gonna to wanna to check out Kloppel Academy on the website. It's included in your live lesson subscription, so you can do both or either. And the upper levels are seriously hard work, but it's gonna take you all the way from ground zero, all the way up to being ready to enter any major music college as a piano major in classical or jazz. And finally, today the schedule says that I'm supposed to give an inspirational lecture. So, you can do it. There you go. The truth is I usually use this time to just clear house and finally give everybody the same advice that I've been giving to individual emailers over the past several months. Because you adult students all have the same questions and the same insecurities and you don't believe that anybody else is experiencing what you're experiencing or afraid of what you're afraid of. So we'll be doing that today. And then we'll also be taking care of some other unfrequently asked questions that sometimes show up in the live lesson. We have to filter them out just because they don't really fit in anywhere else. So it's finally your opportunity to ask all of your random off topic questions about gear and about learning methods or about my family or anything that you want. We'll probably have an extended question and answer time. So it's tangent time. Welcome back, everybody, to the third and final um, Ask Me. First, Ask Me Anything that we've done here. So um, as I said in the intro, this a lot of these questions, all these questions, I get multiple times. And uh, it seems like everybody feels alone out there, like they're the only ones with these questions. So uh, let's jump into the last section of these. If you have other questions um, that it seems like we're not touching on at all, it might be because we hit it in the first two um, sections. So you might want to go check that out. We do have the uh, sheet music here. Cool. The real time sheet music. And um, then this, the questions that are um, that we'll be going after here. The PDF is on the website. So subscribers can download the PDF for all the questions and answers if you want those. But uh, that's not available if you're watching on the YouTube or Twitch streams or in the archives. So uh, anyway, if you want to go pull those down, you'd have to go to the website for that. Question number one, why is it... By the way, I, I said this in the last two uh, lessons. I'll be answering the questions from the, the subscribers on the LearnPianoLive.com website uh, primarily. But if you have questions on uh, YouTube or on Twitch, I'll try to get to those as well. So go ahead and um, put those in. It just might not be a super fast response on those. Okay, so question number one, why is it hard to find a, a teacher who takes adults? Um, and then the implied questions there, sometimes explicitly stated, am I too old? The answer is definitely not the um, brain of the adult piano student video that we put out a long time ago long time ago um 
it answers that question pretty emphatically that definitely you're not too old. If anything, uh, the younger you are, the harder it is to learn piano. But so I'm, I'm not going to go back into the reasons for that um, um, unsubstantiated statement there. But uh, the the. A phenomenon of not being able to find a teacher who takes adult students was one that honestly I didn't think actually existed until I heard from several of you that run into that and you you ask for you know a, a spot in a teacher schedule and then they just can't find one for you because you are too old and they don't teach uh, adult students. I have no idea why that would be except that um, adult students are more. Um, irritating because they ask more questions than kids in a lot of cases. They have more insecurity, so you have to like baby them along more than you do kids. You just tell kids what to do, and then you send them home, and their parents force them to practice. And with adult students, like you all need to know, like why am I doing this? What's the goal going to be? Um, and so I, maybe the the teachers just don't want to deal with that, um, and they're just specialized to teaching kids they know better the a certain curriculum and they they don't want to um they don't feel confident in moving away from a kid's curriculum that's the nice way of putting it um the not nice way of putting it would be i think a lot of them just like they don't they're not actually teaching they're just like flipping the next page on in the book and so if you're coming in saying hey i don't want to learn from the book that you usually teach from i would like to learn the answers to my questions, they might be afraid that they don't have the answers to your questions. And so um, I would just take it as an indication that they, um, they're not a good teacher and I would move on from there. It's definitely not true for most teachers, but why would you take it on yourself if a teacher says, no, I, I don't want to work with you? Why would you take that on as a personal thing yourself when you could just make it their problem? And go, well, they must not be a good teacher and go look for a better one. Whatever is going to motivate you to be practicing and to be learning, then you should you should take that view of it. So just whatever. You don't need them. Move on. You'll find a teacher that um, will answer your questions. You're not too old. You're not too old. I have I have uh, several students, lots of students, man, tons of names of, uh, let's say, 65, since I don't actually ask the age when they, they show up, I know for sure that they would be 65 years and older who start out knowing like zero, nothing. I took uh, like a clarinet in junior high and however many decades ago that was, they don't remember any of that stuff left. And, the, and within, you know, a couple, three years, they're playing music that sounds decent to them and they enjoy it. So that's, that's the one. Cool. What is the sign that an adult student is going to be good? This comes in a lot of different forms, but uh, it all kind of boils down to that. So the biggest difference I see in adult students is um, the students who have recently done something that was difficult to do or they compete in a new sport recently. Um, so I'm looking for someone who um, is like training for their first marathon or that's probably younger students, I know, um, or they have just recently changed jobs or doing something new that they haven't done before, or they've recently started, they've re retired and taken on some new something. They're trying to sell real estate that they've, and they, they don't have any experience in the field. They're trying something new because um, whenever you try something new, you fail all the time. And that's one of the biggest indicators. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that adult students have is just you're not used to failing like kids are used to failing. And so if that's not a new experience for you and you're able to take on what feels like a failure as a learning experience instead, then you're probably going to be much better off in the long run. But you know, if you just retired and you're going to continue to volunteer to do the things that you've been doing for the last four decades, and you've really not done anything new, um, this is going to be this is going to be very jarring probably for you, just emotionally and tactilely or whatever, like mechanically, it's just going to be really weird. And you're probably going to feel really untalented at the beginning. Um, not because you are, but just because you don't, you haven't gotten that feedback from your body in a long, long time. Cool. Uh, what will I be missing if I don't get a teacher? Um, I think probably nothing. 10 years ago, this answer would have totally been different. But um, 
the, the teacher is going to provide perhaps some inspiration and you can get inspiration just from any piano search on YouTube. Um, so you can look up like ins inspirational um, speeches from uh, musicians that I've been following a Chick Corea series recently where he talks about music and um, some Herbie Hancock videos re recently. And those are very, very inspiring. So you don't need a teacher for inspiration, but that would be one of the main things that a teacher should give you. Um, accountability. This is probably one of the bigger ones. Most students don't practice very well except for the day or two before or maybe the day of their lesson. So having like some mark on the calendar where you know another human being is going to evaluate you and judge you um, really helps practice time happen at some point. It's a deadline. So if you were the kind of student where you didn't really need the deadlines because you always did everything early, maybe you don't need the accountability. Maybe, maybe you'll be fine on your own. Um, a community, and again, you don't need a teacher for this, and most teachers don't provide this anyway, but having like someone else who has that same shared experience and you can go to them with your fears and troubles and frustrations and they can relate to it and counter it with another set of uh, fears and struggles, frustrations, and they can say, and by the way, the next step is this thing and here's why this next thing is going to be frustrating. That's really cool to be able to, to have that like affirmation that you're you're normal and that you your progress is is at the right pace which i think is one of our our biggest fears and then efficiency um and this is probably the the biggest one that you're not necessarily going to be able to find except for um you know a place like learnpianolive.com crud that just turned into commercial sorry that was not my intent but uh unless you're getting feedback from a from somewhere there's a chance a small-ish chance that you're doing something that is really bad and that is going to hinder progress down the road. Really small chance. If you're practicing hard, you're you're probably fine. Uh, but they can a teacher can like point out. Well, you know, if you actually practice, you know, tucking your thumb right here or whatever, then it'll help you in the long run because you don't see down the road. But um, you know, you're gonna eventually start doing these arpeggio things or these scale things, and you'll you're gonna need to have this skill anyway. So here's the first opportunity for you to do that. So uh, practicing a little bit more efficiently, a teacher can provide you with. But other than that, I think you can find most of it on um, on YouTube or Reddit or Twitch or somewhere. So um, maybe maybe you don't need anything or it's just really nice sometimes to like not have to do all that stuff yourself. So that's probably where most teachers come in is like a student that's just like, I don't want to mess with any of that. Just you tell me what I'm supposed to learn and when I'm supposed to learn it. And I, I want to be able to play piano, whatever that phrase means down the road. All of you, by the way, say some version of, um, I just want to be able to play something that sounds good, something that I enjoy. I don't want to be a professional pianist. I'm not looking to play at Carnegie Hall. This is almost word for word what every single student says. Um, but I just want to be able to play something, you know, to just be able to sit down and, and enjoy playing music with my friends. Everybody says that. So you all think that you don't want to become a professional musician and you just want to enjoy the instrument. But I don't know what that, what that, like, that's not a thing. Like, it's not like, oh, we're not going to try real hard. I'm going to give you the fake lessons, not the Carnegie Hall lessons. Like, Carnegie Hall just means that you tricked someone into uh, paying you to be at their venue. It has says almost nothing about your skill level or about how, how great a pianist you are. So it's all the same lessons. Whether you want to play it, you, you sit down, you're like, I want to play at Carnegie Hall in 10 years. Cool. You're going to get the same exact assignment as the guy who says, I just want to play, you know, at a Christmas party with my friends. They're this, it's the same same thing. So that's cool. They like, I think what you mean to say when you say that, um, and I, I think I'm pretty sure I'm talking to you because you watching this are probably just like the other hundred percent of students that come in and say the exact same thing. Um, I think what you're actually saying is I don't want you to have really high expectations because I'm afraid that when I go home and practice, I'm not going to get as much done as most of your other students do. And so I want you to keep your expectations for me really low so that I don't feel stupid every time I come back to here. But I'd really like to be able to play the piano. But I just don't want to seem like I'm too invested because then I've got you're you're gonna you're gonna judge me more harshly. So don't judge me so harshly. I think that's what you mean to say. At least that's the way I take it. Um, and so. Anyway, I won't judge you. Just, just, just do your best. It's okay. You screwed up. We'll just go, just go again. That's what we're here for. Okay. 
What can oh where can I get uh, free sheet music for whatever song it is? There are some places where you can get free sheet music. Um, it's all illegal. Um, if you're getting copyrighted music uh, for free somewhere, that is that's not a thing that should be happening. Um, so, but other places where you can get uh, free sheet music that is, I don't know, probably probably not illegal. Freescores.com does have a lot of um, free sheet music, um, and it's most it's almost entirely classical stuff. Uh, or original works. So it's all stuff that is not um, copyright. It's all in the public domain. Public domain just means that um, anyone can, um, it's, it's, not, it's not copyrighted at all. Um, <laughs> yes, from the comments. Yes, we're doing more reharmonization videos very soon. That is a good, oh, 30% of the, the comments that I've gotten from uh, YouTubers so far is um, in the emails is do more reharm videos. I, we're, we're working on it. Um, next week, in fact, on Wednesday, we're doing a reharm video of uh, the um, uh, Willy Wonka song. So Pure Imagination, that's the one. Uh, freescores.com, musescore.com, and noteflight.com are uh, both similar sites. They are sheet music that has been created by users, so um, it's probably going to be about 85% correct. Um, so it's it's uh, it's I wouldn't depend on it as being the real one. Go to yesterday's lesson on my opinion on the real one, but uh, they they're both like they both have really decent um, sheet music that's all just user generated stuff. Um, as is ultimateguitar.com, which I know sounds like a guitar website, but um, it has um, not sheet music, but it does have chords for a song. So if you can pick out a melody on your own, then again, it's all user generated stuff. So it's all people who are slightly better than you um, taking their best guess at what the right chords are. So you can use a lot of that stuff. All the tab stuff is not helpful for you. That's just for guitarists. Um, but they, they have got a ton of stuff there. So anyway, check those those four out. Other than that, I know uh, Nin, I, N -I -N, sheet, Nin Sheets, as in a Nintendo Sheet Music um, dot com, also has a lot of the like, gaming video, uh, video gaming uh, sheet music and stuff that you would, for Nintendo specifically, but a lot of you are requesting that stuff, which is the only reason that I know that site is because I've sent several of you there. Is it better or easier to start on piano or guitar? So there's this uh, misconception out there that like you, everyone should start on. Um, no, okay, yes, I'll, I'll get to those questions in a second. Um, so there's a misconception that we use, so you're supposed to start on piano because it's the best instrument to start on, and then you're going to be better at every other instrument after that. So here's the deal: piano is more visual than any other instrument out there, meaning that the relationship between the notes, the way that your brain is going to process the relationship between the notes makes more sense on the piano. These notes are higher. These notes are lower. On like saxophone, that note is higher unless you do that and then that note is lower and this like everything is just like a random fingering that you just have to memorize. Same thing on guitar. Like you go up and up and up and up and up and then if you want to get higher, you have to go down and over. So then, none of, none of that makes any real logical sense. You can get used to it, and it doesn't bother you after you do it for a while, but it's not nearly as like, this is just like, if you want to go up a little bit, then just go up a little bit. If you want to go down a little bit, then just go down a little bit. To make like chords and stuff, you just like skip over notes, and then, so it all makes way more sense on the piano for most people. But, again, back to yesterday's lesson, and the lesson bef the day before that and every other lesson where we've answered questions um you should do whatever you're motivated to do so if you if you like really want to learn guitar but you feel like you have to learn piano first because uh, this is the one that's going to make you no don't do that just go get a guitar and start plunking around if you're excited to practice on that that's the best route for you is just play guitar i've got a really good guitarist friend who um i interviewed on the the website and I was asking him about like, you know, how, how, how do you like relate the piano to guitar since you started out on guitar? And he's great at guitar. Like, he's a really good guitarist. And he's like, I don't know how you pianists do it. Like this, this thing doesn't make any sense to me at all. Like you go that way for higher notes and like how you make chords. And like, I'm going, I don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like this is, 
This is the abacus to math. This is like this is this makes more sense than anything else. But on him, for him, he just spends so much time on guitar. It, like it all makes way more sense. And the piano thing is like this weird, unknowable, magical instrument. So anyway, it's it's all your experience. Whatever you're motivated to practice. Uh, I will say the other thing. Um, a lot of people have the idea that guitar is either harder to learn because of the fingerings and the, everyone knows about the calluses. Um, and also, they've also heard that it's a much easier instrument than any others to, to learn. And those are, I'm going to say, both, both true in that, uh, especially for kids, the guitar has a higher threshold for m mediocreness because it, it requires some effort to make a, an, an initial sound. Same thing for saxophone, for trumpet, for all the, the other instruments. With the piano, like there's a button that you press and it makes a note. And as long as you press that button, that note always comes out and it's, it just works every single time. For saxophone, like you've got to have the right embouchure and you've got to have the right fingering and you've got to have the right support. Uh, for guitar, you've got to be on the right fret, but not on it, just a little bit over from there. You've got to be pressing down the right amount and not sliding the, the string over. Like there's a lot to just making a sound that's not like pressing a button. So there's that threshold of like you've got to do something to make the sound happen. On top of that, it also hurts. So you've got the pain threshold and you also have the like making the sound threshold. However, once you get past that higher threshold, um, you can do everything on guitar that anyone's going to be able to hear. Like there, you have to get like you're from here to here is like all of the great um, all of the great guitarists that you've heard on the radio for the last 30 years. It's all the exact same skill. So once you finally get to pass that threshold, like, wow, I can play everything. Like, I'm a professional guitarist. This is all that there is to ever learn. And then, like, the next step after that is, like, you've got to practice tons to get to that next thing. But, like, everything that you care about is right in that range. So once you get past that initial threshold, yes, guitar is way easier than piano to sound good on but it just takes that initial initial bump. Some for some people that's you know a few weeks. For some people it's a, a year or two. Uh, but then you're you're in that zone. For piano, like every we fight for every extra little bit of progress. There is this left hand thing, the YouTube one five one sound that is on, on every literally every single cover on YouTube. Um, that's. Uh, Like that thing right there is just ubiquitous. So there, there are tools like that that just like, oh, all the music that you've heard uses this thing. But um, for the most part, I'd say we, we struggle a lot more on piano to get one more little um, additional tool. And on guitar, there's a lot more sitting in that in that medium range. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's the one. So piano uh, definitely is easier to understand. To me, might be subjective. Um, how does your, oh, let's, let's get to this other stuff. Um, uh, other instruments. Okay. Yeah. So for some context, um, my jazz saxophone, uh, my, my degree in, in uh, college was jazz saxophone. Uh, guitar is something that I play ish. As long as I'm not around guitarists, I, that's something that I would say, but uh, I do, I like, I've got, um, other guitarists from the Sacramento area that come in and like work with me on, especially the jazz guitar. Um, cause I don't, I'm not very good at most of that. I understand it in my head. Um, I understand jazz a lot better than I understand how to make those mechanically happen on a guitar. So, um, there's some definitely lots of people who would say that I play guitar. Um, there are guitarists who would say that I play guitar better than them. But they're, they're um, yeah. So uh, then bass guitar um, is kind of in that same range. Banjo is like even lower on that range. And then the saxophones, like I play mostly alto saxophone, but then there's like tenor saxophone, soprano saxophone, flute, clarinet, which I hate. Um, all that kind of is, is in that family-ish that you can kind of fake your way through if you can play one of the saxophones. Um, what else? Oh, I own a drum set. I used to be semi-decent at that and haven't practiced that in forever i think that's about it yeah so most mostly piano um next uh, week the uh uh streams will not be on uh youtube that those are just going to be um on the uh, website we do every other week on the website we do uh, covers of songs so we start at the very beginning and we like i'd show you like the each individual note i like to play 
no, that's um, Carpenter's. Da ba da ba da. Uh, but how does Pure Imagination go? It's the same song. So I would like to teach you each of the notes, and then the next day we go through the theory of it and break that down, and then the next day we do like reharms and covers of it. So that's every two weeks we do that full on like I've never heard the song before to like reharmonizing the song uh, and covering it. So um, th those are just constantly there. We just only stream it on YouTube once every very not very often. Um, okay, so next question is uh oh how does your piano make string sounds so during some of the the broadcast some of the lessons um you have heard my my piano do weird funky things so one of the thing weird things right now the sound is coming out of microphones that are in, in the strings of my piano because it's a it's a legit real actual piano so that's the sound of my piano if i kill that mic now you're just hearing it through this mic still just a regular piano i have a little switch here that turns off the strings on my piano so now like there's still a digital signal being sent from <laughs> we had to take all the the uh keys off of my keyboard put reflective tape underneath each one of the keys um and then put 88 uh, a bar that had 88 different sensors one sensor for each um key so and then that's plugged into another uh piano disc um uh module over here so that when I press down a note even when the strings are still on that the lasers are being shot up against the reflective tape and um, can record the, how fast and which notes I'm playing cool so from there then it's all just regular keyboard stuff to make sounds come out um, I've got this guy right here so I'll turn the, the strings back off by the way when I say turn the strings off I it, there's just a little bar that um, this amazing technician named Brett I don't know his last name from Sacramento uh, came and uh, when I flip this switch here there's a little uh, bar that comes up so that the string the hammer instead of going up and hitting the actual string it just comes up and hits the bar just barely right before it hits the string. So it still feels like I'm playing a regular piano, but it's that hammer just doesn't quite make it up to the strings. Um, it's some of them, if I play them really hard, I can I can force that hammer to like barely touch, touch that string. So anyway, then I've got this other device over here. And so that's the electronic sound being sent out of my device over here. And so I can change the sounds on that. the strings back on so now you hear the piano the regular piano sound but you also hear the electronic piano sound and sound now you can hear both of them or you can change the strings where are my strings oh that's right i've got to set up my strings over there Anyway, I think you get the idea. So there's then there's settings for these, so I can. Like, here we go. Or I've got this other device that I also sent to over here. So this is, this will have like. Oh, uh, really? Ah, uh, boo. Okay. <laughs> so turn this down. Turn that off. Where are you, buddy? Ah, oh, man. So I've got another device that I'm apparently still learning how to use. No, you're not gonna. Lie. Okay. I thought I was gonna be able to show you this. Ah. Okay. Anyway, so I've got the three devices essentially: an a real piano, and then two electronic. Ah, back to the piano. Okay, so that's how all that works and how all that's put together. Um, so it's an actual real piano, yes, and it, it's an actual electronic piano, yes. Um, yes, indeed. Okay. Hey, Eastern Africa. Awesome. Welcome. Cool. 
Message retracted. Okay. Um, uh, how do I know if I'm talented or not? <laughs> <laughs> I know some of you who've been here before already know uh, my long, long, long answer to this. So um, I don't know what talent is. Um, I, would, I, I know that the vast majority of my students that come in, if I measure their practice hours, they and all of them at about 50 hours of practice and at about 100 hours of practice are have a predictable set of skills. So meaning that everybody is, is pretty much average is going to boil down to the numbers of hours that you put in where you are focused on trying to get that next little nugget. Some students I have come in and report tons of practices, mostly kids. Um, adults always do the opposite. They're like, oh, I didn't really practice at all. And it sounds really terrible. And then they play me something that sounds like usually pretty super decent. Um, but kids especially will come in and they're like, yeah, I practice for an hour every day. But what they really mean is like, I played that song that isn't my assignment anymore um, for like 10 minutes a day, but it felt like an hour. Um, so anyway, so some of the reporting I think is off, but for all of them that I feel like they're being genuine or I can back up their um, their stories there it, it all feels about the same so that would tell me that like that everyone is learning at about the same pace by the way my the, my uh, piano mentor teacher guy um, would totally disagree with this like we we've had um, several different uh, disagreements about this he thinks that like some some kids just got it and other kids don't so he's definitely right because I'm definitely wrong, which is why I go to him for piano advice. Mm. But in my experience, it's exactly the opposite. Um, everyone progresses at about the same rate. There's a huge difference, though, between people who really enjoy it. Like, they play it, and when the sound comes out, it feels magical to them. They, they really get something out of it, and they just, they're just they really jazzed by uh, forcing this thing to do what was in their heart or what something they've heard somewhere else like it's just it's just really cool for them i think that's what talent is it's just the drive and the excitement to go in and like do one more thing well we may have practiced this thing and as they're practicing they're screwing up just as much as the other person but the other person is screwing up feeling bad about it and then trying again and frustrated that it's not working and then trying again and why isn't this thing working for me and the person who i would call talented is just like well they screwed up the thing but then they're gonna try it again and wait hang on no i think i've almost got it. i've almost got it it's like a kid playing a video game or something like they'll die you know 50 times in a row and be frustrated by it be very frustrated by it especially if it's the same place every single time i always die on this but there's just like something in them that drives them well we'll try it one more time ah oh, i died We'll try it one more time. Oh, I died. We'll try it one more time. That when if you've got that feeling about whatever that next little thing is that you're trying to do, then I th would say that you're as talented as anyone that I've ever seen. And then there's people like Joey Alexander, who I keep bringing up, who um, is uh, like, a, I don't know, he's probably 13 by now, 14. Um, and he's a better jazz pianist than I will probably in reality ever be. Um, he's just, he's just got something in him and I'm, i would guess that if i looked at his practice logs he's probably put in you know 14 hours a day for the last whatever 10 years um so then maybe maybe that's understandable but he de he definitely has something in him that's weird and so th the practical part of me that is talking to 99.999 percent of you all says talent's not real it's it's not a real thing and then there's some people that just come along like, okay well that person is an alien, but aside from that person, talent's not real. So, um, if you if you uh, work hard at it, if you're enjoying it, if you if it makes sense to you, that's another thing. Um, but I see this more with with kids, especially um, where like some of them come in and like they get that they're trying to make a song happen on the piano. They they like they understand there's a connection between buttons that I press and this artistic thing that I've heard on the radio. And so they're trying to replicate that thing in other people, other kids especially, um, it's just an assignment for them. They're like, okay, well, my soccer coach tells me I've got to use the side of my foot to kick the ball. And my basketball coach tells me I need to put my, my elbow forward. And my piano teacher says I have to press this one and it's called a G. Like it's all the same thing. They don't have that connection of like, that we're doing something here. There's something to be accomplished. You can see this also in sports. Like there's soccer players that are just like, they're to like have the snacks at the end or something. And then there's others that are like, well, this is my ball and I have to get it in, in that goal. So there's that that kind of a thing. And that's probably talent too. But um, other than that, 
if you put in the work, if you're focused, that's why I keep trying to say focus practice instead of just practice hours. If you if you've got some goal in mind, in however small it is, um, and you're working at it, I think you'll be about as good as all of the other people who are practicing. And some of you strongly disagree with me. Um, okay. So then, um, I do oh, yeah, this one. Um, so <laughs> this is this is not just on YouTube, but on on the website um, too. We'll we'll get done with the lesson, and then someone will watch it in the archives and say you should have explained this more or whatever. And I like a hundred percent of the time, I try to explain it to that person afterwards. But I know for sure that every time they said it, and I had the opportunity to fix that with them, there were probably you know another fifty people who didn't say that and just figured either that I was a terrible teacher which might be true. There's some good defense for that. Um, or that they were just dumb and they didn't understand it and it's not for them, which probably isn't true. I, I would much sooner bet on the first one that I just didn't explain it well. So um, if you wish that I had explained a certain part better or in more in depth, then you should definitely say so. And then there's a good chance that I um, was... There's a decent chance I skipped over something that I knew needed more explanation because I've explained it 3,000 times in other lessons and that the viewers who have been with me for a while will be frustrated by my saying the same things over and over. So I might refer you to a video before, but just because you have a question doesn't mean that that's any fault of yours at all or that there's something you just don't understand or that everybody else is getting and you are not. So definitely you should ask those questions all the time. Um, and then in a lot of cases, in a ton of cases, it just it something that I didn't explain and I, it didn't occur to me to explain it. And so the, this making my lessons way, way better. If it was just me at this thing, um, these lessons would be as good as they were, whatever, 400, 500 lessons ago uh, when we first started out. But because you all tell me um, the, the sucky things that I do, then these <laughs> lessons get a little bit better each time. Hopefully that's the goal. Um, you're probably not. Oh, yeah. This is this one. Excuses. Um, Every single lesson, every single day, Monday through Friday, Sunday through Friday, people sit in this seat. Um, and at least two or three times within a day, this is what I hear. They'll play something and then they'll say, I swear I played this perfectly at home. Like those exact same words. I hear this every single day day it's like when you go to work and people are like hey sure is nice weather like yes i know like do we have to do this every day and then you pass that person's desk and you get to the next person and they're like mm -hmm. so what do you think about the weather uh, right so this is, i have your teacher whoever your teacher is has the same feeling when you say the words i swear this would i could play this at home they already know that when you screw up any good teacher is already adding a good 20 percent to whatever you're playing for them they're assuming that while you were at home it sounded better here's the other part it doesn't matter because all that matters for what you can play is what you can play all the time so um if, if you get to your lesson and all of a sudden you can't do it because of the pressure of your teacher which is real and it's on a different piano and everything feels weird and all this other stuff um then that's just how good you are in that moment so there's no ex you're not actually i think most people are feeling like well i'm actually better than this but for some reason my betterness isn't coming out right now that's not true you are exactly as good as you're playing right now but you're playing in stressed conditions, so you can play better than this if you weren't in stressed conditions. And I wish I could just put a sign like that up in my lobby um, and we wouldn't have to go through this multiple times a day. Later on today, students will come in, sit at this seat and say those exact words. I swear I just played this perfectly at home. I know. I know. That's fine. Just go again. Just go again. Um, or the other one uh, in your emails. You're probably going to think this is stupid, but... Every all everybody has to go through the same set of questions. So you having a question about a certain thing, it might be a stupid question. It might be a question that no one who has any experience with piano ever has. But maybe you just don't have that experience with piano yet. So you've got to go through that. So I know. I know you feel insecure and you feel like it's dumb and you could do this better, except that and for Learn Piano Live, we do video submissions. So people submitting their videos and on a good, at least realistically 10% of the videos that come from adults, if not higher, uh, higher percentage, there's 
the, 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 a disclaimer for it. They'll say, the, you know, the, the required disclaimer, this is for use at Kloppel Academy. And then they'll say, I swear this, this was perfect. Or they'll submit the video in, in, the, in the email. They'll say, I, I swear I could play. I had to do 20 takes to get this perfect, but I played it perfectly three times in a row before I turned on the camera. I know. I know. Everybody's that way. I just, just, just go for it. You'll get it. This is stress conditions. Um, last one for today. What is it really like being a piano teacher? It sounds like it would be terrible. I am surprised how many people say this to my face because it seems like wherever I was, like when I got my hair cut today, like I had the thought, boy, I'm sure glad I don't have to cut hair, but I didn't have the guts to say, man, it must suck to be um, a hair cutter, hairstylist, whatever. Um, so yeah, it, it, that means probably there's a lot more people thinking that um, and not saying it. And for me, like I've, I've worked a lot of really sucky jobs and um, I'm not really like the, um, the piano part of it isn't nearly as exciting to me, like playing the piano, cool. Um, I enjoy teaching a lot. I was a school teacher for like 10 years in a fifth and sixth grade classroom. That was awesome. If that would have paid the bills, I probably would have never um, left that job. So that was, that was totally cool. Um, and enjoyed it a lot, but I like hated all of my like music classes that I had to teach, especially the elementary, um, music classes. Like that was just the worst part of my job. And they're like, but you're a teacher and you play music. So you must love teaching music. And it was just not the case at all. So in groups, I hate teaching music, which is why I don't do like summer workshops, even though there's tons of money in that in the summer um, stuff. There's just, I can't, I can't, I will, I will. You'll find me at the business end of a rope uh, <laughs> if, if I start doing that. But like the, the teaching aspect of it is super, super fun for me. I just really enjoy people watching people, helping people get to guiding people through that thing where they like didn't get it. And then they get it and they like they're surprised by themselves and me watching people be surprised by themselves is like the the coolest thing in the world and the fact that i would like get paid for that and to uh yeah th that i can make a living doing that it's like it's it's totally totally awesome so for me i think it's super cool not because of the piano aspect when i want you know good piano i don't ask of i don't ask that of my students i just go practice piano because i really enjoy playing the piano and i also really enjoy this thing of helping people work through this thing and one-on-one -on -one that ends up working out and it can, you can make a living, um, doing that as a, as a piano teacher, but it's not the piano part that, that bugs me or the, 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 that I enjoy, which also means it's not the piano part that bugs me because people come in and they like play Fear Elise. Like I'm going to hear Fear Elise 10 times a day. Probably. I don't know who my students are today, but I'm probably going to hear Fear Elise 10 times a day, or I'm going to have students not playing Fear Elise. And they're like, do you think we could learn that one song? What's the name of that one that like the best piano song in the universe? I'm like, Fearless, yeah, that one. And they're going to be really excited about it. So I'm going to be excited for them, not because I like Fearless. I don't really care about Fearless at all, but um, because I like, but watching them be excited, like that's exciting for me. So it's like, I don't know, taking your kids to the amusement park or whatever. Like you might not enjoy riding the rides, but like that, that enjoyment that you get out of them enjoying that thing, then, then that's cool. So I really do enjoy that. And I can't relate to um, not enjoying that. I can't relate to people who think that this would be a sucky job. Um, but I guess if you didn't have that and you really loved piano and you really loved good piano and that's why you got into teaching is so that you could l hear people play good piano all day, then yeah, you definitely, you definitely would want to not live anymore because you end up just hearing terrible piano all day. It doesn't bug me at all. But uh, if that was your thing, then yeah, I could imagine that would be, that would be awful. But all the wrong notes to me are just like, pre success in my in my world and watching someone get that is 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 the is the most awesome thing in the world so yep then there's three more things down here those are for your questions so send in your questions and uh, hopefully we'll be able to fit them in if this went well and everybody enjoyed this then we will do some more um, AMAs um, and stream them live. If not, then uh, we'll just be back on the website in about six months to do another one of these wrap ups to make sure that um, I'm getting everybody's questions answered and greetings to all of you who sent me greetings. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, across all of the platforms, uh, Twitch and YouTube. And of course on the website, until next time, I guess that's it. Uh, like I said, next week on the website, we're going to be doing uh, pure imagination. 
the plan right now is to not broadcast that on the the free streaming sites. I've just had yeah. to be for subscribers. But um, do send me your requests if you really like the reharm videos and you've got ideas of stuff that you wish that I would do um, reharmed. Then uh, let me know, and uh, I enjoy those a lot. I enjoy seeing what they become after we run through them. It always ter terrifies me at the beginning, and we get to the end of it. I'm like, actually, this sounds pretty good. So uh, anyway, I love you. Good luck. Have fun.